a wretched life, where we might accumulate around ourselves all of the uh, trappings of wealth and success, but without that internal spiritual wealth of consciousness of God, then all of this becomes meaningless. And that's why it is not surprising to hear stories of people who are at the top of the pyramid. They seem to have everything, yet they're killing themselves with drugs, you know, committing suicide, doing some of the craziest things. When we read about it, we say, why would somebody do that? Well, because there was no inner peace. They didn't find peace in the remembrance of Allah. And that's, we said, on the other side, where people are not aware of Allah, then that leads them to disbelief altogether when trials come to them. We spoke about that in an earlier program, that one of the biggest reasons why people go astray to the point where they deny God's existence it's because they don't have that regular consciousness. And when the calamity strikes, they can't accept that this could possibly be with the permission of God. So they end up denying God altogether. But a person who is remembering God all the time, whether things go well or things don't go well, then when that calamity strikes, they have the patience. They have the kind of patience which will carry them through it. So... The Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, gave us, even at this most mundane moment, this most lowly moment in our lives, remembrance of Allah, calling on Him with His greatest name. After that, we have the day-to-day -day, uh, practice of prayer. And what precedes prayer? Ablution, where we wash ourselves, we clean ourselves up for prayer. Again, ablution, this act, this spiritual act, has been prescribed after the Basmala. That saying Allah's name, doing it in the name of Allah, is a requirement for it to really be complete. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said, La salata liman la wudu Allah. There is no prayer acceptable to Allah for one who doesn't make ablution. Wala wudu a liman lam yadhkur ismallahi ta'ala alayhi. And the ablution is not acceptable to Allah in its completeness if one does not mention the name of Allah before it. Actually, the text of the statement of the Prophet ﷺ implies that if you didn't mention the name of Allah, you didn't say Bismillah, actually the wudu is not accepted at all. However, the majority of scholars in looking at it concluded that this was a recommendation and that we can say instead, rather than saying that it is not valid altogether, what we say is that it is not complete. It is deficient. It has lost some of its full spiritual reward. And when we think of ablution, we should think of it primarily from its spiritual perspective, from the spiritual perspective, and not merely from the physical perspective, because fundamentally, wudu is a spiritual act. With that, dear viewers, we're going to take here a brief break, and I will see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. trying to get together, but all their efforts were in vain because of ignoring or turning away from this great foundation. We see many people coming to the way of truth, following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but later on,
they get off track. What is the reason behind that? Unity is a result. It's not a cover-up. We have to be united from inside. And Allah made this clear in the Quran when He said, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولَ Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I welcome you again, dear viewers, to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. And as we pointed out earlier and throughout the series, we're looking at how the names of Allah have relevance to our day-to-day lives. Allah has revealed those names for us to take benefit from them. On one hand, in knowing who He is, to be clear on who He is, to know who He is and who He isn't, to make sure that in fact we're worshipping the one true God. On the other hand, it is also for us to reflect those qualities and those characteristics which the, these various names necessitate in us as human beings. And that's for those which do that. There are some names like Allah and Ar-Rahman, which are not applicable to human beings, to Allah's creatures. So it's not about us trying to reflect those, but we praise Allah with those names. But for those names which have the human element in there, where human beings can reflect some aspects of those names, then the names are there to guide us through our lives. And by guarding them, knowing them, uh, understanding them, and applying them in our lives, 99 of them in particular, Prophet Muhammad said, the reward is paradise. And as we're going to look at these names, I'm sure it becomes more and more clear why the knowing or the guarding or the counting with respect with regard to understanding 99 of Allah's names any 99 because we said before that 99 is not a limitation but 99 of them if we are able to guard them through living what they necessitate, one is guaranteed paradise. Because a person who does that would surely be a truly righteous believer. In the previous uh, episode, we looked at, uh, in the beginning of wudu, that Prophet Muhammad had prescribed for us to say, Bismillah, at the beginning of wudu. And we said that the reason behind that is to keep the spiritual character of wudu. We should be conscious of it. Not to think of it merely as a physical cleaning, though that is there. However, if we look at some of the other statements of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with regards to wudu, we find him saying that when a person makes wudu properly, 